Hey guys, Omni here. Welcome back. Today we are diving into episode one of season two of The Bear. Last season has been an insanely wild roller coaster, man. I've enjoyed every second of it, every anxiety inducing second of this show. And I'm excited to see what is around the corner next for this group of characters because the last season ended with them finding all that cash and deciding to, you know, renovate the restaurant, rename it, and, uh, yeah, so it's, we're opening up a whole new chapter. There's still a lot of leftover questions still. I don't know if we're going to kind of go back and breadcrumb some of those throughout this season still, or if we're kind of done with all that and we're going to have some whole new stuff to worry about this time around, but I guess we are going to find out. That all said, if you want to see the full three action, you can check it out over on Patreon or for government channel, I'll get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes for actually the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You also get to suggest and vote what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind scenes footage to try to make it worth your while since you are going to do your way to support the channel. But guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this reaction, so at least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. With that all said, all the way, let's hop into episode one. Beef, here we So, I'm um, question. Because he was like itchy, scratched his own hand, lotioned it, then lotioned hers, and then he said tap, and then he went to do the compress and then put it on her forehead. Like, I'm just wondering, like, why there's the verbal physical cues for him maybe to remember, or he's like, if I need it, she needs it. I kind of, I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. It's just like, I found that kind of interesting. I see these like sweeping shots and stuff and I'm just like, is the Joker robbing the bank somewhere? <laughs> they just reminded me outside of the, the score being completely different, but like the sweeping shots just made me think of the opening of The Dark Knight. It's official, man. He's taking the sign down. <laughs> the Bear, part two. Paul Rudd. Porter! In fact, it's a facelift, it's not a gut. Bear, it is a facelift and a gut. He's not wrong, Jeff. Hey, how's my budget looking? Great. Not good. Shit. <laughs> right, fuck this. Watch. The bear, all right? We have equipment that works. That's a great start, everybody. Zero. The fryer is fucked. The fryer is fucked. That's 5K right there. And the oven is scary. That's another test. Okay, good. All right, so we got 20. 30. 30. 30. The oven. Fuck me. Then we got the windows, the demo, the brick. That's 50K plus 20K. That is 70K. That's not bad. Really? Fuck me. Cousin! Bust the the inspection for the Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, he just keeps having to correct his math. Yes. No, we are at 85. Mm. <laughs> Wait, no, how is he doing 95, this? Thank just you. Morbid curiosity. Oh my god. Oh, do we think these numbers are? I'm pretty pretty much right on a couple of them. fantastic. Terrible. Okay. So I still don't see the drywall on Yes, there. right. No, Richie's brother-in-law, he's going to do the drywall. Actually, cousin! Where the fuck is he? It's so weird when he doesn't oh, answer downstairs. me. Downstairs. Right. There's a downstairs? You need a project manager. Okay, you're hired. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Said Nat. <laughs> Not good. No, bad. It's bad. We'll suck her into the family business. Yo. Cousin, can you call Sally in a drywall estimate? 13. That'll be his drywall estimate. Okay. Yo, you ever think about purpose? I love you, but I do not have time for this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have time for this. Mm. Mm. What's my purpose, homie? Your shirt says original birth. It's a pretty mm. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Is it always? 
Or am I you only know, I'm, just now noticing I'm that? It's really hard to be on board with all this new shit because I'm reading a lot. I'm trying to learn about who am I to my history. So in one of these books, there's this dude who's got no skills, no personality. All he does is watch his trains. And he's got this group of friends that he's had since he's a little kid. And they're all the shit. And they're outgrowing them. Like, one's like a sick athlete. One's a genius. This other one's nasty on the keys. Then this other one, she's got like charisma like a motherfucker. And one day out of the blue, they drop his ass. They just cut that motherfucker off. Why do they do that? Because he's got no purpose. Okay, so what, what does he do? I don't know. I haven't read that far. But I do know that um, He relates a little too strongly to that character. 45. You've been here a long time. You know what the fuck you're doing. You love all this shit. It's fun for you. I don't have that. I'm afraid one day I'm going to wake up and you guys are all just going to cut... Just drop this ass. Richie, I'm not going to drop this ass. It's just not fun for me. Yeah, but you love it. It doesn't make it fun. This shit is not fun for you, cousin. What the fuck is fun for you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have to get back to you on that. Mm, God, that was a heavy scene, man. I kind of relate to certain aspects of that it just comes out when you like you compare yourself to the people around you and where th they seem to be on the expected ladder for most people of your age group or whatever what you're expected to be doing or have done by a certain point in your life and it's just at a certain point you got to realize that everybody's just on a different track and what works for other people is not going to work for everybody. Comparison is always going to lead you into a dark place most of the time. All these stacked layers of steel, and in between them is an aluminum core. You're an so aluminum core? Oh, hi, Ricky. So, see, how you doing? Just like lurking, waiting till I like said No, no, that, I just walked or... in perfect timing. Yeah, okay. How is she? All good. Um, nurse just had an emergency. She'll be back tomorrow, and Chester's got her. If you need anything. Yeah, I know. When your back's against the wall, that's when I kick you in the balls. Ballbreaker! I'm gonna find you a new home. That's gonna be my home. Your home's my oh, home. Oh, they're getting rid of the machines. Was he gonna have more weird ass conversations with the characters in the game? What the hell was that, by the way? It just out of nowhere happens. He's talking to the character in the game, and the character. Is talking back to him. What the hell was that? Yo, now what was that great idea we had the other day? What I said to write down? Yeah. Mm. I don't suppose you wrote it down. No. In other news, I reviewed your numbers. Mm. Yeah. You're missing an IRS stipulation. Which IRS stipulation? The one that says businesses have to have all previous debts be current. Yeah, but we're on a payment plan. And complete before any new business license is granted. That can't possibly no. be true. All right, so that's, that's definitely true. Thank you. Thank you for... Um, for helping today, but you have to get the fuck out of here. You gotta save yourself. Sydney asked me to be project manager. That's interesting. What did you say? That it was interesting and that I'd think about it. We need a project manager? Mm, yes. Yeah, probably. Yes, we do. Very much so. Yes. Hello. Good morning. I'm He's not trying to keep her from rest. getting trapped in yeah, here alongside you know, who's him. Who's gonna approve all these insane interest rates? Oh, that's nice. Carmen, go fuck yourself. What's going on? <laughs> oh, you're not gonna like it. Awesome. So, <laughs> gas is off until hoods and overheads pass the new fire suppression test. Is that a fact? Oh no. It no. Is not Sounds a like a fact. fact. It is not a it's fact. It's a specialist. Some good news. Everybody is food certified except for Ibra, who just needs to be renewed, and Richie, who actually has never done it because. Richie. Yes. Also, I filed with the BACP Fun. for a city of Chicago consultant. We need them to approve all of our new business paperwork, and then they'll send a rep. That rep will sign off on another rep who will come and look at stuff, and then sign off on on a different rep. How many reps is that? Many, a lot, a lot that of reps. That sounds yeah, but it's, like it's gonna be okay, you know. Such a hassle. Good God. Sydney. Sure oh. Fuck. What was that? Oh, I fell through a wall. Good morning. Damn, you got strong. What kind of insurance <laughs> coverage do we have for people falling through the fucking wall? A really good kind, where you pray they don't. No, Sid, you too fuck. <gasps> Why did I hear <gasps> Fenway? A, fuck the Red Sox, and B, what has it been hiding for? A, five that's years? three, four. A, that's Mikey's favorite squad. So please show some respect, okay? And B, 
That's the result of some failed Jewish lightning. Mm. Yo. What? what? That's Wait, what? what? It's no, we're not doing that. I'd like to add it to the list, please. Look, I haven't said GRR in over a week. No, you cousin, have... explain. In an effort of personal growth, I promise not to say gay or No, turn cousin, anymore. the whole. Explain. It. Jewish lightning mm. is when you burn down a place. Is the explanation uh, Wait, what? <laughs> there was a time when Mikey was maybe on some shit. And he thought that if this place were to accidentally burn down, that maybe there'd be some insurance money. Thank you. I just want to say that I think that oh explanation of my Jewish lightning does God. not something that we shouldn't say. Yeah, okay. agreed. All right, this is salvageable. Jeff, you fell through the wall? Corner. You okay? Yes. Hmm? What was I saying? Gotta stay calm and take it step by step. No, I know. We will. Not the first hole in the wall I've fallen through. No, no, that's it is. what you were saying. Paint the crawl space. That was the great idea. Yo, cousin, you do me a favor and get the paint from the crawl space. I'm on the operating table right now, cousin. Purpose, chef. The mm. point, chef. Thank you. Ah. There's a hole in the wall. Yeah, I heard. Do me a favor. You just keep thinking about it. I'll definitely keep thinking about that hole. Not the project management. It's not enough money. Never is. Where do you get more? <laughs> he's like am i is that just me or does everybody hear that this is coming from a place of wanting to start fresh and clean i love this place i love this city i want to start our first business here an honest business with 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 honest partners we want to do high level dining and hospitality. We drafted a quick term sheet that specifically lays out not only our business prospectus, but an execution guide as well as a return portfolio. Hey, Richard, will you turn that fucking thing off, please? Oh, are they trying to get more money from Cicero? Mikey was telling you the truth. About the, the petting zoo? What? No, franchising. He wanted to franchise this place. He wanted to open a restaurant with me. How the fuck do you know? Because we found your money. Motherfucker didn't put in that bank, did he? No, he, he definitely didn't put it in the bank. <gasps> Thank Christ. What is KBL? Kalinowski, me, Berzato, you, Lane. Lee. Who's Lee? Uncle Lee Lane. Oof. That's not our uncle. Yeah, well, Richie's not your cousin. Heard and resent it. Hey, Richie, <laughs> could you please turn that goddamn motherfucking thing off? It's making me insane. How's it not making you insane? I don't mind it. Fuck did I know the, the crawl space had a goddamn alarm on it. Getting Mikey's... Fucking Kevin McCallipper. Callister. <laughs> yes. Hello. Uh, the password is go fast boats mojito, all one word. Just to be clear, because you know, I can't fucking hear correctly. Not only are you not giving me back the original three hundred thousand dollars you owe me, but you are also asking me for an additional five hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Oh. That sounds correct. Okay. How many times have you done this, Carm? None times. And what's yeah. your track record, Sid? Uh Great. Cool. I'm in. Okay, you are first out with a bonkers interest rate because, well, we have no choice. And <sighs> you'd also be entitled to a partnership. Partnership of what, my love? You throw a rock, you hit five great restaurants. Well, we're going to be better. This is going to be a destination spot. And I know that because we're going to get a star. Sid. Carl. Fuck stars. Okay, well, you can say that because you already got one. I never got one. I retained it. That's basically a cousin it's getting not one. Take getting one. It. It's not retaining <laughs> one. Somebody else got it. I retained it. Wait, Guys, but, yeah, you but, kind but, of got yeah. one, though. What do you mean? Yeah, we can get, let's get a start. Oh, thank fucking thank God. Fuck. Yeah, bitch. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, bitch. <get> I <laughs> just fucking Richie from oh, down the hall. Right? We don't pay you back by the end of 18 months, and it is yours. What's mine? All of it. The building and the lot. Well, car. Yeah, car. What do you think? Oh. I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking. Tell me more. You can get five million for this lot. Two, maybe. Your math is like... fucked. <laughs> okay, look. We don't pay you the money by the end of 18 months. God, this is the funniest episode so you far. Out your nephew, he blew it. You're out 800 grand and you can make two million and then we are done forever. I wasn't going to tell you about the money, but we need more and we need a partner and that is the truth. What do you say? Hmm. How long it take you to open? That is a great question. Well, I mean, you know, great partners ask great questions. We got a thing. Okay. All right, fact, Gary on. Betting it all on this, man. This doesn't work. They just lose everything. Given it's going to take six months. To six open. months? Six months. We have 18 months to pay back that loan. Uh, is there anything we can do? I mean. Dude, you are the one that said 18 months. That's a CP. 
What does he be? Carmi the Carmi problem. problem. Great. Six months is gonna kill us. Yeah, no, we're gonna have to be rocking from the jump. Do you want a uh, star? I think it'd be nice, yeah. Start looking in the crew? Yeah. Natalie, do you work here? I'm still thinking. I have one person still thinking, Chef. Tremendous. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, we're gonna have to find people that want to learn, which is gonna be impossible, but now it's even more difficult to teach people how to give a shit. Okay, good night, Jeffs. Tina! Tina, hey, sorry. Uh, what's up? Feel free to say no. This is probably insane, and it would just require a lot of training and... I mean, like, a lot of training, like, more than you've probably ever done before. And, you know, you're talking about the new Sue, and I guess... Oh, yeah, I can ask around. I just don't know anybody off the top. No, no, no. She's Tina, asking you. I'm asking you if, if you would um, be interested in learning how to be my Sue. Yeah, if you, I guess... I don't know, if you want to be my Jeff or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, Christmas. <laughs> very strong. Very, very strong. <laughs> That's cool. Great. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Go home though. Okay. Yeah. But I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Night. Aww. Okay. That made her day. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for today, Bear. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow? Uh, we'll see. Okay, well, I'm choosing to believe. <laughs> Are we gonna leave early? I mean, there's only so much we can do without permits. Feels weird though, right? Very, yes. What do you, uh... Oh, uh... I don't know. Um, what are you gonna... No idea. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Awkward. You don't know what to do. What is the benefit of these clear boards? Like these clear dry erase boards? Like I feel like it'd just be hard to look at. What would you use it for versus just a regular whiteboard? Feedback, I'd love to hear. Um, what, what was that? Yo! Six months is too long. We need to open this shit ASAP. Heard. I'm getting visual overload. They're gonna do it in three. This is a terrible idea. Yeah, just making sure. Opening day. Oh, God. That is some pressure. But yeah, I gotta say, like, if, again, you know, we've talked about many times up until this point about how this show is like a comedy or is it a drama and how we've been very, or at least I've been very consistent on saying that this feels like 95% drama. This was the funniest episode, I think, just outright to me. And I think it's because the air in the restaurant has changed and everybody's heads are in a very different place right now. And there were still some heavy moments in this episode, like that whole like contemplation of purpose with Richie. He's just reflecting upon how everybody's kind of got this idea of what they want to do, what they're good at, what they're trying to do and achieve. They're reaching for things. And he's just kind of, he's been here. He's just been grasping onto things that are familiar, trying to keep them from slipping through his fingers or changing, leaving or whatever. He's been holding on to everything around him and the past and all these things because he doesn't know what to do with himself. He doesn't know how to process all of this. And there's a lot of, uh, insecurity about what he brings to the table that's coming out after all of this, after finally accepting that Michael is gone. And he's just like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. And he's reading this story. He's reading these books and stuff like that, trying to like figure things out. And then he finds this story about this guy who has no ambition. He just kind of lingers all day, watches the trains do their thing. Everybody else is off, you know, going out, seeing each other, interacting, going to jobs, college, whatever. 
you know, growing. He feels like that person who's just being left behind by everybody else or being a dead weight because they cut that guy out. Maybe because he doesn't fit into the picture anymore. Maybe because he doesn't reach out to me anymore. He didn't really elaborate too much, but like, who knows? Like, they fall to the wayside. And like, he's just kind of looking at himself and he's just seeing everybody around him striving to do better and doing better and having these goals and expectations for themselves. He's just like, who am I and what am I doing? He's just afraid that everybody's going to eventually cut him out. And that's a very real fear that I think a lot of people can kind of go through, especially in today's day and age when there's a lot of different avenues, there's a lot of different expectations, there's a lot of different things that are at play. Like I very much so relate to that fear in a lot of ways. It just happens when you start to compare yourself and your life and your trajectory compared to other people. And then on top of that, there's the comparison that's made to like what is expected of you to have achieved or done with your life by a certain point. By 30, sometimes you're pretty much expected to have kids, have gone to college, be married, start a family, and be settling down by the time you're 30. That's the expectation of like the last couple of decades for the most part and onward. That's still something that's like ingrained into your head through media, through all kinds of different things. And then when you start to see other people in your life figuring things out before you, you start to wonder what what's wrong with me. And that's just not the thing. Like everybody does different things all the time. Nobody's on the exact same track. And that's something you just kind of got to wrestle with. But it's not always easy to do that. Meanwhile, I think it's kind of funny that um, he's got his sister now roped into all of this. And not even roped in. He didn't even try. He was trying to keep her out of this for the most part, but she's kind of invested after the this money's been found, after there's this hope. Obviously, he's not able to reconcile with all this himself or handle all this himself. And Sid knows that they need an extra head in charge of all of this kind of stuff, and this seems to be in her wheelhouse. She's already the one that has to deal with the IRS stuff to begin with. It's kind of becoming more open to the family. Whereas Mikey was trying to keep everybody out of it and keep everybody from going down with the ship, it might be the family that actually is able to save this place. And where they owe Cicero money, realizing that they need even more to achieve what they're trying to do with this place. You know, they're like, hey, we found your money, by the way, but actually, rather than pay you back, we could use some more. They sell him, they pitch him on what they're trying to do, what they want to do with this place. And at the end of the time, if they are not able to pay him back, they will just outright sell the lot, the building, all of it. At the end, he'll get what he had wanted, what he had tried to do earlier because he wanted to buy this place and the land and the lot and all this stuff earlier to settle all of that. But Carmi didn't want to let it go. So now he's putting his money where his mouth is and he's like, hey, I'm literally betting on my ability to turn this into a successful location. Like they want this place to be a go to uh, visitation eating spot not just another decent restaurant in the area they're going to be like we're going to outshine all those motherfuckers around us Sydney's like and we're going to get a star <laughs> he's like oh, we, 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 yeah. that whole conversation about them latching on to about the star was kind of funny but you know there's a lot of money that needs to be made to get this place up and then there's the timetable of actually renovating the place which is where they're struggling right now they're like uh, right now even by a miracle, six months is, you know, the fastest we can get from contractors and all that kind of stuff if we're lucky. And they're like, that still leaves us with not enough time to do what we need to do. It leaves them 12 months to pay back that loan. And they're like, no, we need to get up and running before that. So like they want to go home early because there's nothing more they can do without the permits. So they're like, shit, none of them can stop thinking about it because those three are immediately right back at the restaurant later that evening trying to figure out what to do. They're like, okay, they came up with this whole attack plan. This is insane. They will be working every second of every day to get it done in three. Don't know how the hell that's even possible considering the permits, all the bureaucracy and red tape you have to go through to get the approvals and all that kind of stuff from the contractors, or if they're just going to try to do as much of it as they can themselves. I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm excited to see the effort and see this place transform. And then on top of that, who's going to stay? Are we going to keep all the same crew? Clearly, Richie's going to stay around because Carmi's like, hey, man, don't worry. I'm not leaving you behind. You're part of the family regardless, you know. And then Tina being invited on. Like, where are we gone, man? Where where do we start to where we are now, man? From butting heads with Sid to now being offered this position as her Sue. 
And she's like, hey, I know you don't have the traditional training, but you have the gusto. You have the drive, the ambition. She unlocked that with Tina, this drive, this push to do better and improve and not just be settling for what is okay like they had been. Everybody was just kind of fine with things the way they were, and they were just going through the motions. Every day was just the same routine, no growth, no change, just bare minimum to feed the customer and make it out at the end of the day. And they ignited this spark in her and Marcus to strive to do better. And she now really wants that approval, wants that recognition. She's got this hunger. Now that it's just that the way her face lit up when Sydney offered that position to her. God, that warmed my heart so much. I love where those, how far those two have come in such a short amount of, or at least like for us, the viewer, a short amount of time. I'm not exactly sure how much in world time has passed, but uh, I wonder if we're going to keep everybody because they're talking about new staff and vetting people to be in the kitchen and all this kind of stuff, that the, getting people that need to want to learn and have this push and this drive as well that matches their own. So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Are we gonna be rotating people out? I would have to imagine Marcus has to stay for sure, right? Like, cause of his dedication to his own craft? I would hope so. But then we also have this situation with him and what I presume is his grandmother who's in the hospital and uh, is needing this kind of constant watch that seems to be a recent happening. So I don't know if that's going to hamper things moving forward or not, but I'm excited to see where things go. This was a really, just like every episode at this point, energized episode, but it was also the most hopeful, the most uh, uplifting, and honestly, the funniest episode, I think, of the show so far. But still jam-packed with all that drama but i'm excited to see what happens next guys what do you all think sound off the comments let me know your thoughts down below we'll carry the conversation after the video hope you enjoy the reaction if it did leave a like drop a comment subscribe if you're not already remember to see the full-length reaction as always you can check it out over on patreon or forget to the channel get you access as well and speaking of before we go i want to shout out our channel legends Manny share your course got melito robert anguiano jeffrey l jake Cottrell, eric official casey wood and russell crockett thank you guys so much for continued support but that's it for this video guys and i'll see you all in the next one Take care, everybody.